Hey everyone, we got one more video upload from Japan's PS5 YouTube Gaming Week preview and we learned some more new information. In this video, we're going to see some form of customization, as well as we can confirm some other information I was guessing at in my last video, so stay tuned to find out all the new details. A like on the video would really help the channel out, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my other previews and tips and tricks videos. Alright, let's get into it. So the first really cool thing that we get to see in this clip, for the first time we actually see one of the main character's appearance has been customized. We already knew that it should be possible to customize Leo or Emma, but the other gameplay clips we saw had them all shown in the same skin and hair color. Well, here we can see Leo with slightly darker skin, brown eyes, and reddish brown hair, as opposed to the blonde hair and blue eyes in all the trailers, and black hair in the other gameplay clips. This is just great to see that there are at least a few options when choosing your character, just to make it a little more personalized. Next up, we can confirm that jumping on enemies' heads will damage or defeat them, not just using the costume powers to reflect back attacks or hit them with special abilities. This means the game will probably play similar to games like Super Mario and will feel familiar to players of those kinds of games. Next up, while we got to see this costume in action in all other gameplay clips, the name introduction scene was cut out, so now we finally have an official name for this costume. The Jumping Jack. What do you think of the name? Leave a comment down below and let me know. A really interesting thing that we didn't see in any of the other clips, here we can see a strange floating object that when jumped into, slowly releases a drop. It's unclear if you had to use the tornado wolf to open it, or if jumping into it is enough, but it looks like it's another object to keep your eyes out for when exploring the world. We also see a little more about the gold Balan hat. While the player doesn't jump all the way to it, Balan does briefly appear. I wonder if maybe it's just like a tutorial spot where if you go to it you get instructions on what to do? What do you think it might be for? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Taking a deeper look at some of the clips, we can see that the keys are not tied to specific costumes, so you could potentially pick up keys and store them to collect for costumes later on if you really wanted to. Up last, we got a confirmation about how the battle system really works. Hang in there to find out all the details. As I guessed in my last video, I can now confirm that the health or damage system does work similar to games like Super Mario. When you have a costume equipped, if you take damage, you lose that costume and swap to the next. If you then take damage again, you lose that next costume, and so on. We don't see any of the players actually get a game over screen, but I think it's safe to say that if you get hit without a costume, you most likely will get sent back to retry. We also see here that you can do damage to enemies with different costumes. After losing the Tornado Wolf, he's able to land two attacks with the Jumping Jack before losing that and finishing the fight with the Elasti Plant. You'll also notice that after taking damage, there's a fairly lengthy period of invulnerability which is what allowed him to win this fight. If we look in the distance really carefully during this fight, as they pan the camera around, you can see that the costume has regenerated. Presumably, you can pick it up again if you leave the fight and then come back to finish. We can't tell if this only regenerates after losing the costume in the battle, or if it's simply a timed thing and they always regenerate. Also interesting to note, throughout the fight, the Tims keep walking into the enemy and don't appear to be harmed or damaged in any way. They also don't appear to do anything to the enemy. We have heard that Red Tims will try and help fight with us, so perhaps this is how they would behave, but they would actually be doing something to the enemy. In all the other YouTube clips we saw of the boss battle, they always waited and used the Tornado Wolf to repel tornadoes back to the enemy, and then used the Piggy Pounder to hammer the spike into the ground for more damage. Here we can see that they actually used the Piggy Pounder right away to slam the enemy's foot and do damage. This opens up a whole bunch of possibilities for these battles and speedrunners out there. Finding the optimal costumes that let you complete each stage or encounter could be lots of fun. Interestingly enough, you'll notice that after some time in the boss fight, the key respawns. We don't see another costume spawn, so they may only respawn if you lose the costume in the fight, but again, it's something to keep our eyes out for. Lastly, it seems the boss only takes three hits before he's defeated. This is the same as in all the other clips we've seen when they reflect the tornado's back of the boss, so I don't believe any attacks do more damage than the others, it just looks like you'll always have to hit them three times. We see an extended version of the musical number at the end of the battle. Just looks really cute and fun. That's all the new information I was able to find in this new clip. Let me know if there's anything I missed in the comment section down below. 
Just a quick reminder, I stream on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturday nights, so come and join if you want to chat about Balan Wonderworld, games, or any kind of tech. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. As always, happy gaming.